Professor Seth Stoughton, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, let's get straight into it. You've worked in policing. You understand what it is like to be a policeman and you've studied it. What do you make of America's current police situation? Is it as bad as people say? Is it overblown or is it somewhere in between? It's somewhere in between. It's not as bad as it used to be and it's not nearly as good as it could be and as it should be. Uh, we've seen a lot of progress with American policing. It is different and better than it was 50 years ago, mm -hmm. but it's not nearly as much better compared to five years ago or 10 years ago as we should be. So I think people are right to keep their attention on it and to demand improvements. When we look at policing, uh, you know, and you look at the conversations around defund the police or abolish the police, a lot of those arguments boil down to the idea that too much money has been put into policing, which isn't getting the required result. But you have a different idea of what you think policing should be. What, what, what is that exactly? Yeah, so I and others have really tried to push this idea of guardian policing. And guardian policing is a, a service-oriented approach where the values, the principles that underlie policing, that help agencies figure out how to deploy their resources, that help individual officers figure out how to deal with particular situations, should be grounded in the desire to serve and to protect community members from unnecessary indignities and harms. And the important part is that includes the unnecessary indignities and harms that can result from policing itself. You can't look at policing in America or anywhere in the world without looking at the origins of policing and what it was originally intended to do, which was help rich people keep poor people away from their shit, essentially. That's what it was. And so when you, when you look at policing today, you still see vestiges of that, you know, like how tickets are given out, who police choose to enforce, how they choose to enforce. So is there a way to reform a system that is fundamentally built on a flawed concept or, or do you have to rebuild something from the ground up? One of the things that we need to remember is that we don't have a race issue in policing. We have a race issue in society that gets reflected and often magnified in police encounters. It's not going to be enough to just focus on policing. We also need to think about how to improve society and the way that we as society uh, depend on police. We've put police into the position of dealing with these issues, dealing with these social problems. Right. And there's so many connections between race and poverty and the way that we've criminalized uh, some substances, right? The difference between crack and powder cocaine, for example. Mm -hmm. I do think we can build atop a, a bad foundation. I think what it requires us to do is repair that foundation, both in society and in policing. And this is why I think we need cultural change within policing. It's not enough to just say, let's keep doing what we've been doing, but tweak it a bit. We need to reimagine the culture of policing itself. From what I've read, it seems like a lot of police training is based around a worst case scenario. You know, a lot of police training is, all right, we're gonna teach you how to do a, a, conduct a traffic stop, and at any moment, someone can pull out a gun. All right, we're gonna teach you how to handle a domestic dispute, and at any moment, someone can pull out a gun. We're gonna teach you, it feels like police are trained to expect the worst in every scenario, and so when anything happens in real life, they go, this is exactly what I've been trained for. Is that an accurate portrayal of part of the problem? It, it is. I'm going to give the general caveat that there are 18,000 police agencies and 650 yeah. different academies, so it, it varies. But certainly fear-based training is a major obstacle to collaborative, democratically accountable policing. It's very difficult to tell an officer, everyone that you interact with is able to and possibly willing to kill you, and at the same time, tell the officer, so go out, make friends, be nice, and you know, engage in community policing. Right. There's some major mixed messages there. And if you ask most officers, is policing safer today than it has been, or is it less safe, or is it about the same? What you hear almost inevitably is it's worse than it's ever been. And that's because within policing, we provide and reinforce this message of threat and danger that the evidence doesn't really bear out, but it's a very, very powerful narrative and a very powerful rhetoric that, that's difficult to resist. Yeah, it, it really feels like we're living in a world where 
you know, police feel like they're under assault and so are responding like a force that is under assault, it also feels like society is torn between these two worlds where, you know, they've been given this false, like, choice between zero police or zero law enforcement in any way, shape, or form, or an extremely militarized force. What are some of the tangible things that have been done that have improved policing? I think there's a whole mess of reforms. There are are, uh, legislative reforms at the federal level. Uh, We need better data. The feds could uh, pass legislation that incentivized states to do the data collection that we need to really get a very granular understanding of policing. We need better legal frameworks at the state level for officer certification. Uh, The idea of of wandering officers who are fired or who resign in lieu of termination from one agency only to go to work at another agency should terrify everyone, including folks who are supporters of good policing. We need to get a handle, frankly, on some of the union contract provisions that provide significant procedural safeguards to officers. It can make it very, very difficult to identify, investigate, or discipline Uh, officers who've engaged in misconduct. And we can do things at the local level, not just as as a matter of law and local ordinances, but as a matter of police agency policy. Building police culture around peer intervention, the way the New Orleans Police Department has with its EPIC program, Ethical Policing is Courageous, is, uh, it should be a, a no-brainer. It should be a first step for agencies across the country. A lot of what people complain about with policing is just in the day-to-day interactions, the way police treat communities of color, the way police treat black people, the way police treat a lot of poorer white communities as well. You know, and you've, I've seen some of these communities who've said, no, we agree with defunding the police. We agree because we have also felt the brunt of this. So what do you think could be done to improve the accountability that police feel towards their communities? At risk of sounding like a broken record, I think it has to be baked into culture. Just having a new policy or some new training is not going to be enough. I think we can change that social and legal framework, but even that I think is, is not going to be enough without that cultural change. The, maybe the, the bigger thing here is figuring out where we have overused police. Because one of the complaints that I'm sure you've heard, we don't just have complaints of over-policing in marginalized communities. We also, at the same time, we have complaints of under-policing. The cops are focusing on drug crimes and they're stopping everybody, but they're not paying any attention to the robberies or the auto thefts, right? right? That's because the police, at least in those communities, are not actually responding to what the community cares about. That's a basic failure of democratic institutions. And unfortunately, a lot of the insular nature of policing, a lot of that adversarial us versus them mentality makes it very easy to reject criticism or uh, ignore calls for reform. Well, I think what you're saying is... um... It's tough for a lot of people to hear because it means the problem is a lot bigger than they'd like to admit. But at the same time, um, that's the truth for many issues, you know, looking at it through the lens of society, figuring out what police are doing on behalf of society and then going from there. Um, Professor Stoughton, thank you so much for joining us on the show and uh, stay safe out there. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity.